Hello, everybody. Um, I'm actually not streaming this. My wife gave me the idea. She's just like, you should look for Chai Mecco um, still off screen, um, but you should still record it. So this is what I'm doing. Um, so here I am. It's actually in the morning here um, on, what day is today? Thursday. And, you know, you know me living that... Uh, summer life after school has ended, which is lovely. Um, so I can do this in the morning, which is great. But now we just keep uh, keep running into these old shuppets. Um, I did see something that said you should look in like the bottom right patch of grass at the summit for Chimeco. I don't know how true that is or how effective that is in reality, but this is where I'm this is where I'm doing it. And I feel like we are finding some higher level ghosts thus far. <laughs> I feel like they've all been like closer to level 30. Um, I'm pretty sure from what I saw, Chimeco is going to be at level 28, no matter what. Um, so it'll be pretty close to our squad. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot more of this, which is fine. Um, I'll just kind of be giving you my commentary as we go. Oh, let's see. I, again, I love Chimeco. I think it is a really underrated, really cool Pokemon. Um, in Generation 4, it actually gets a um, little pre-evolution, which is really cute. It's called Chingling. Oh, it's great. Um, I feel like Chimeco is a prime candidate to get some sort of, like, mega evolution or just another evolution because, um, we have Roselia in this game and in later games it gets both a pre-evolution and an evolution to it. So, Roselia goes from a single stage Pokemon, just completely by itself, to being the middle stage of an evolution line. It's very interesting. I feel like something similar could happen um, for Chimeco. But it's another one of those things like... Um, there are Pokemon that I grew to love and cherish... Um, just in their regular forms that I think maybe could have just stayed in their regular forms. It could have stayed a, a one-stage Pokemon. There aren't many of those anymore. Um, but then they decided that they needed to give it something like a pre-evolution or an evolution, um, which is fine. And, and some of them are really good. Uh, like, let's see, like Gliger gets an evolution later, and it's really, really good. Um, but then there are some others like Rhydon gets an evolution, and I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Um, but probably the one I, like, personally dislike maybe the most is Sneasel. Because in Generation 2, I thought Sneasel was so cool. It was so, like, complete. It was really cool and really strong. It was small, but it was like a fast, like, assassin ninja Pokemon. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was awesome. Um, but they have, they gave it an evolution that I didn't think was really an improvement on Sneasel. I'm like, okay, well, now you've made one of my favorites, like, obsolete and given me something that isn't, uh, isn't that good. Isn't that good to me? Um, but let's see. Um, again, it is great to be here in the morning. I love working in schools for that reason. Um, it's summer for me here in Ohio, and it's really, really gorgeous. I think it's supposed to get, like, kind of hot this week, more like high 80s, low 90s. Um, I don't really like that as much, but the past couple weeks, it has been, like, 75, baby. That is my favorite thing ever. Um, and like I, and I've said this before, I used to live in Los Angeles and it was, you know, it was sunny just about every day. 
Um, and even though it was, you know, 75 and sunny a lot of the time, I didn't like how it was never cloudy, how there was never weather. Um, and during the summer, I lived in the valley, um, which is like the area above Hollywood, basically, um, in between some of the mountains there. And it just got brutally hot in the summer, like ridiculously hot, like a hundred degrees for like, it felt like it was a hundred degrees for like six months straight. It was, it was really miserable. Um, (laughs) I have not made, not kept too much of a secret that LA was not my favorite place to live. Um, I really liked being around other creative people. That was really awesome. Um, you get less of that here. Um, but just the weather and the dust and the fire, (laughs) the air quality was very, very poor. Um, the traffic was very bad. There are obviously some things that I miss. I would really like to go back and visit some spots, you know, um, I would be very nostalgic for some of those spots because, again, I did live there for four years. It was really crazy. Um. Yeah, this music again. Ah, not quite. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to shuffle through. Just get the music again, baby. Mmm. It has some of the best music ever, man. I will turn it off, though. Oh, what else can we talk about? Um... I really like to collect Pokemon cards. Um, I've talked about that on stream sometimes. Like, there's a really cool card show um, that's in town that I like to go to. It's every couple months. And I kind of started getting into it. When did I get into it? Maybe, like, 2018, 2017, 2018, something like that. Right before, like, the big boom happened. Um... And I actually, I actually sold one today. I, I have a little eBay store um, uh, where I will buy and sell some stuff. I don't. I try not to go crazy with it, um, but you know, it's it's really fun. It's a it's a fun hobby. Uh, I know it like during the pandemic in 2020, it like really really grew. Um, and it was it was just really it was a really fun time and it's kind of like receded a little bit since then but it was it's still way more popular than it was uh, prior and i remember i actually took one of my buddy's old collections um because he had some like really cool like vintage stuff um and Again, this was during, like, the boom, so everything made so much money. <laughs> he he was probably sitting on uh, several, several thousand dollars, um, which was nice. I mean, you know, it wasn't anything like, you know, he looked in his closet and there was a hundred thousand dollar item or anything. But, I mean, 40 bucks here, 50 bucks there, 80 bucks here, like... It was it was popping off, man. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk about more card stuff while we search for Chimeco here. Um, a lot of my I grew up with the original sets, like base set, jungle, fossil, team rocket. Those were uh, those were the bread and butters. I opened a lot of Jim Challenge and Jim Heroes. Base set two, I opened so much base set two. 
uh, because I, I feel like I kind of got in around the end of regular base set. So I don't have that much regular base set. I, I don't think many people in like most of the country, America, didn't really have access to first edition base set. Like that would be so sick if I had some <laughs> just sitting around because those are rare, rare. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just not something that you have lying around. And again, I don't think I've ever opened a first edition base set pack. I did open a couple first edition packs of some of the later sets. Um, I don't have anything cr too crazy first edition, but, um, so yeah, I started with those classic sets, those original English sets. Um, but then... I really, really, really love the Neo sets because um, again, I'm a I'm a big Gen two Gen two guy, um, and when Generation One came around, I was like, you know, I was like six, so I was like starting to like stuff <laughs> um, and really enjoy it. But um, you know. Like I said, the first time I played Yellow, I didn't actually beat it. It wasn't until Generation 2 came around until I was like 8, 9, 10, where I could like really start to understand stuff and really get into stuff a little more. Um, just those next couple of years are like really big and just your brain development. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm really attached to the Neo sets. Um, Neo Genesis, Neo... Discovery, Revelation, and Destiny are so awesome. And I do have, I did open a lot of that Neo stuff, and I did have some really nice, really nice pulls as a kid. Um, I actually opened two Lugias from Neo Genesis when I was, when I was a boy. Um, and they have been a prize to me ever since. I thought it was so sick that I had two of them. Oh, and that artwork is so great. Um, during like the 2020 boom, that Lugia card in, you know, gem mint condition first edition was, I think, selling for about $100,000, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. Maybe like 50, 75,000. Like it was, it was a really expensive card. Um, it's definitely come down now, but it's still, um, I, I know, several thousand. Um, for a PSA 10 first edition Neo Genesis Lugia. Like I said, I didn't have first edition. Mine were both unlimited, but um, I did, because I had them in my childhood binder um, forever, and like I had all of my cards, and they were really stuffed in there, and I would kind of take them out and put them back in. So none of my cards were in like super pristine shape. Like they, they didn't look terrible. They weren't like all chewed up or anything, but um, I actually got both of those Lugias graded by PSA. Um, they both got sixes, but that's okay. They're, they're like preserved, uh, memories for me that I, that I really cherished, which is, which is lovely. Um, but let's see. Oh yes. And then Neo Destiny. If you're not familiar with Pokemon cards and you don't know what Neo Destiny is, it is a set. And in this set, there was a little subset um, of Shining Pokemon. Um, there was Shining, uh, Charizard, Shining Mewtwo, Shining Tyranitar, Shining Celebi, Noctowl, um, and they were so awesome. Uh, the first two Shinings were actually in the previous set, Neo Revelation, um, Shining Magikarp and Shining Gyarados. Uh, they were the first two, but it wasn't until Neo Destiny that they really made it like a thing. Um, and as a kid, I actually pulled a Shining Raichu and a Shining Kabutops, uh, which is super sick. And I, I, and again, I did that as a kid, and I did not know how big a, a huge of a deal it was. Um, I kind of wish I would have pulled a Shining Tyranitar, but it is what it is. Um... I actually got both of those cards graded, and I think they both got eights, which is better than I would have thought for a childhood card for me. Um, 
I've had a handful of cards graded with PSA. I think I've only ever gotten one ten, um, and it was like a modern card. I have like a really cool uh, Machamp Marshadow team up card um, that I got graded in a ten. Um, but yeah, the Neo sets are really, really what did it for me. And then, you know, the Pokemon cards used to be produced by the company Wizards of the Coast, which is the company that created, or produces at least, Magic the Gathering. Um, but um, after the Neo sets, there was there were just a few more sets. Like there was Legendary Collection, I think. I don't. I think that was after the Neos. I don't remember. Might have been right before. Um, and then they had Expedition, Aquapolis, and Sky Ridge. And those packs and boxes and cards, those are all really, really expensive because they didn't print that many. Um, and they're, they were the last cards in the... Um, I actually got cursed by that Shuppet. Uh, they were the last cards in the... Or the last sets, rather that Wizards of the Coast ever made. After that, it uh, um, the rights to produce the Pokemon cards went to, uh, like, the Pokemon Company and Nintendo. Um, but yeah, and then after that, they started doing, like, the Generation 3, like what we're doing now, um, like Ruby and Sapphire, EX. I think this is, like, the EX era, people will say. Um... And a lot of those boxes are pretty rare, too, because it was definitely, like, the weakest time in the Pokemon card hobby, so they didn't produce as much. Um, and there are also really, really rare um, cards in a lot of those sets, similar to the Shining cards from Neo Destiny, and they were called Gold Stars. Um, so the gold star cards, like specifically there is a gold star, um, Rayquaza, which is, you know, if you don't know Rayquaza, it's that big green dragon that's on the, that's on the, uh, what you call it, the title screen for this game, and we'll encounter him later. Um, but, uh, the gold star Rayquaza is like the prize, um, gold star card or at least you know at least one of them because there's a gold star charizard gold star um mewtwo oh uh, but i guess i shouldn't say that because there's a very very special set um pop series i don't remember the number um but these pop series packs they weren't like regular sets they were kind of like special like really limited edition sets and the packs only had a couple cards in them like two or three i think um, and there's actually a Gold Star Espeon and a Gold Star Umbreon um, that come from the Pop Series packs. And that Gold Star Umbreon is a is probably the rarest Gold Star, I would say. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. If I ever even post this video, honestly, because uh, we have been searching for Chimeco for almost 20 minutes on speed up and we still haven't found it like i i said this a million times in my last episode like chimeco is supposed to be a two percent encounter it like we have had a hundred encounters at this point i feel right um like we've definitely had a hundred encounters and that means with 100 encounters, we should have encountered Chimeco twice. If it's 2%. Um, so, I don't know where my Chimeco's at. Because it's not like... And we've seen so many Duskulls. It's not like Duskull is super common. It's 13%. Um, I feel like in our 100 encounters or so, we've definitely seen more than 13 Duskulls. Um... But anyway, where, where where was I? Gold Star cards. <laughs> um, and how the Gold Star Umbreon is like the Gold Star, or like the rarest Gold Star. 
And it's kind of, it's a special case though, right? That's why it's the rarest one is because it's not in like a normal set. Um, but uh, after that, you got into like Diamond Pearl Platinum uh, and then Gen 5, Gen 6. Um, I kind of got back into the hobby around Gen 7 um, when Sun and Moon came out. They had these... They had a really great set called Team Up, and that's really what I kind of started opening because they had these awesome tag team cards. I loved the art. I love how there was more than one Pokemon in the card art, like some big ones. Like there's a Venusaur and Celebi in Team Up that I really loved. Um, Gengar and Mimikyu, I think, is maybe one of the biggest ones. But um, two Pokemon from the, from the Generation 3 games... Latias and Latios, they had a special tag team card together. Um, and they're very much like companion Pokemon. And it's like them making a little heart. It's so adorable. That card really popped off. I think it's over $1,000, just like not even graded at all, um, the Latias and Latios. But that's kind of when I got back into the hobby, was around that era opened up a lot of those like sun and moon sets and um then i've just kind of like stuck with it ever since i've really enjoyed collecting the new stuff um i really like the twilight masquerade set that just came out i think it's really cool um i'm collecting some singles from that um and i you know again i i, I try not to i try not to go overboard because you can just spend too much money <laughs> And that's why I like to sell stuff too, you know. I try to be smart about it and if there's stuff that I don't want or don't need or I try to I try to sell it or I'll I'll trade some stuff in to local card shops and stuff. Um but uh yeah, every set that comes out, I'll kind of try to pick out some of the singles that I really really think are cool um from those sets and just buy a few of them and uh but overall, as far as the stuff I collect, I I just try to stick to some of my favorites. Or like if I have good memories with um, some of the characters when playing the games, I will um, kind of try to stick to some of those. Like uh, especially with some of these new games, like kind of like that first team that I play through, I kind of try to pick up a card. Um, that kind of like represents a lot of the Pokemon that I use on that first team. And again, it's it, they're more just kind of like keepsakes, memories. I really love the art, um, especially a lot of that, a lot of the vintage stuff. I try to have, um, uh, you know, I try to complete the set mostly because there are some cards that are just absurdly expensive, and I don't care that much about them, you know. But. Um, but lucky for me, I still have a lot of my vintage stuff. It might not be in, like, the best condition ever, ever, but it's still uh, still in good shape. Oh, I don't like how we can't escape from Shuppet here. Wow, this is just, like, out of complete nowhere, that Blaine dies. That's so stupid. <laughs> Got away safely. All right, I'll, I'll just have Piccolo in the front just because... Um, I will use a revive though, because it might be useful to put Chimeco to sleep. If we ever find one. Um, but I guess one of the last things I can say about Pokemon cards, sorry, I've just been rambling on about Pokemon cards, but I guess I gotta talk about something besides Shuppet. Um, I. Um, hold on. I'll let you have the good music while I take a drink. Ugh, been talking. But, um... Ugh, excuse me. I... There, I talked about the set Gym Heroes and, and its companion set, Gym Challenge. Um, they are really, really cool because... Each Pokemon would say, like, the name of a gym leader that that Pokemon belonged to. Um, and they were all, like, the Generation 1 gym leaders. I think they were, yeah, they were the only ones that existed at the time. Um, and it would be, like, 
Lieutenant Surge's Raichu or like Sabrina's Alakazam or Erica's Vileplume, stuff like that. Um, and that was so awesome. And there is a Japanese exclusive set, never came out in English, um, called Versus. And it was a, a lot like Gym Challenger, Gym Heroes, but it had the Generation 2 Gym Leaders and like Elite Four members. It was so cool. It is so cool. And that is the set that I am trying to complete right now. Um, and those cards are really rare. And I, I just make little tiny pickups at a time um, <laughs> because they can be expensive. And, you know, not all of the cards are in pristine condition at all. Um, and I don't care too much about that because it's just a, it's what they call a binder set. You're not worried too much about the condition as long as it looks like pretty solid um, sitting in your binder. You don't care that much about it. But um, if you're into Pokemon cards and you haven't heard of the Versus set... Um, I would look into that because it's it's so cool. Um, I think my favorite card there um, there is a card called Karen's Umbreon, and that's like the big card from the set. That's like the really expensive one. Um, but I love the card Bugsy's Scizor. Oh, that one is so great, so great. Um, love it so much. That set rocks. Um, and I can't wait to complete it. I think there's like 150 some cards in that set. Um, and I have like, I have over a hundred. So I am, I'm, I'm basically like two thirds of the way there. Um, and you know, maybe in the next two to three years, I'll be able, I'll be able to complete it. Like I said, I, I make pickups every now and then. Um, and it's funny, I will go to, I will like go to the card shows or like card shops and I'll be like, Hey, I'm looking for this set. And they're just like, Whoa, really? I didn't even know people knew what that set was. Um, cause a lot of people don't even have it. Cause again, um, the vendors that I go to, obviously I live in America. They're mostly concerned with English stuff. They're not really worried about, um, have even having Japanese products. Um, but there's a couple of couple of vendors, a couple of shops that have have some versus cards that I will pick up. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a short history of <laughs> the Pokemon TCG, and it's funny um, because I never really played the games. I just, or uh, not the games. I obviously play the games. I never played the card game. Um, I just liked to collect them and just liked to have them in the binder. And I mean, that was kind of the whole conceit of Pokemon when it was created was that catchphrase, got to catch them all, of course. Um, and it's very funny because that is how I engaged with the franchise um, when it came to the cards. Like I had to catch them all. I had to collect them all. Um, but when it comes to the games, I just like to catch and use my favorites or catch and use the ones that are strong, ones that I like. Um, because, you know, I could have caught all of these Shuppets if I wanted to, but I don't want a Shuppet. I want a Chimeco. Um, so that's just kind of interesting how my brain works. My brain and our brains always work in mysterious ways. Um... So yeah, that's the card game. Um, and we are still, uh, we're still hunting, baby. We're still hunting. We are almost a half an hour in. And I mean, we did, we did like 20 minutes last night. And again, this is, this is on speed up. <laughs> um, I do want to check something because I think you can use the move Sweet Scent. I want to say that we have a TM for the move Sweet Scent. Maybe we don't. Um, no, we don't. I think we, you get the TM for Sweet Scent in Generation 2. Um, but I think you can use Sweet Scent outside of battle to 
make Pokemon more likely to appear. Um, now, one thing I might look into is let's check something. Um, because I know that some Pokemon learn Sweet Scent naturally. And we might be able to use that to our advantage. If we go pick one up. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, okay, so I have like a little baby strategy we can maybe use. Um, I might... Let's do this. I'm gonna come back because we might be able to make something work here. Does our Oddish still know Sweet Scent? Because I'm pretty... Yeah, we had an Oddish, right? Yes, little guy. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to grab this Oddish. I'm actually going to put Harry in the PC for now because we're not really using him. Harry's time will come shortly. Oh, and before I started the stream, I actually picked up a couple berries um, that I had planted. I actually planted a couple more. Um, so more could grow. Um, so we're actually going to be pretty, pretty good when it comes to uh, berries to feed Feebas. Um, as long as we don't mess up the um, puzzle too much. Let's see here. All right. So let's drop a super repel. Just to get us back up to Mount Pyre. And it is, these games for me are just comfort, man. They, I, I know how to do everything. It really eases my anxious brain um, to play a game where I know, where I already know everything. All right, and just like that, we're back to Mount Pyre. So now, um, I can use Sweet Scent. Whoa. Looks like there's nothing here. Oh, interesting. What if I do it here? I've actually never done this before. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Does that do anything? <laughs> I mean, hey, at this point, it's worth a shot. Um, we are 33 minutes in. Um, I feel like this probably makes a noise. Ooh, so interesting. Um, I, I, I don't know if this makes it more likely that... Um, Chimeco will appear. Um, let's see. Hmm. So yeah, it can just, so basically I, I thought it like increased the spawn rate or something. Um, but apparently all it does is it will just make a wild Pokemon appear, um, no matter where you're standing. And it's like very interesting. Let's check this. Cause at this point I'm willing, I'm willing to try anything. Ah, I got another call. I feel like we've gotten a lot of calls during our hunt. 
Yeah, and this says that sweet scent can cause a wild encounter if, even if there is a repel in effect. Um, And I feel, I feel at this point, I can't not find one during this stream because I don't want to spend too much time. Um, but uh, I got to find one. Well, let's go up here. Not there. This is where we were searching earlier. Yes! Yes! Oh! Chime Echo! Chime Echo! Oh! Dude! You have been killing me, Chime Echo! Um. I gotta be real careful of that. Um, so I'm definitely not going to take it too far down. Okay, yawn, that's fine. Oh, yawn's actually a pretty useful move. Um, get a nice sleep move there. Oh, come on, Blaine! Ah. Uh, ah. I think with uproar, yes, with uproar, I can't fall asleep. That's an interesting little thing. I'll just use an energy, this energy powder. Okay. So it used yawn, and usually what happens with yawn is that I will fall asleep the next turn. But since it used uproar, ah, so Chimeco can't sleep in an uproar, so now no one can sleep. That's so interesting, it's so fun. Um, so let's just do some pecs right now. Because I am absolutely petrified of making it faint um because i super duper don't want to find another one so let's try to put it to sleep now that it's calmed down great um wow okay so chimeco's fast asleep got those beautiful little z's let's let's just chuck an ultra ball for now I can always use more pecs if I want. Dang it. Okay. Let's use another Ultra Ball. Dang it! Okay, I don't know how difficult Chimeco is to um, catch. Uh, all right, so we're gonna heal again. Actually, probably need to buy some potions before too long. And again, ah, and there's that confusion. Remember, Chimeco is actually a psychic type Pokemon. There we go. So it knows take down confusion, yawn, and uproar. That's fun. Um, lovely. I'll go ahead and use one more peck because even a critical hit won't kill it. Good. And I will keep chucking my Ultra Balls. Thank you. Thank you. We did it. We did it! Amazing. Oh, great. They fly about very actively when the hot season arrives. They communicate among themselves using seven different and distinguishing cries. Ah! The Wind Chime Pokemon. I love Chimeco. Ah, uh, yes. And our Tim, Chim our Chimeco is a boy. And I remember in the anime, um, James of Jesse and James had a Chimeco, so I'm naming my Chimeco James. 
That looks wrong. It's so weird. When I spelled the name James just then, I'm just like, is that how you spell it? <laughs> it's kind of like when you say things too much, you they kind of start to sound wrong. Um, but folks, that concludes this little bonus episode of Emerald, the Chimeco Hunt. It was, it was something else. I'll tell you that. Um, but at least you got to hear the entire history of the Pokemon TCG. <laughs> At least uh, a good chunk of it. But anyway, have a great day, wherever you may be watching, listening, and uh, I'll see you next time. Peace, kids. <laughs>